name is Martha Zink and I'm with Salient Consulting. This is another video on iBeacons and FileMaker 15 where we're going to talk about how iBeacons can benefit the business. So I'm going to use my previous example where we're looking at a FileMaker app where a user is in a museum and they can open up the app, hit the refresh button, and it will give them some information about the artwork around them. So I'm going to click on this refresh button on my iPhone. It's going to search for any iBeacons that are near me. In this case, it's found one, and it's the persistence of memory. Now, if I walked around the room and hit that refresh button again, presumably I should see other iBeacons depending on where I've moved and what else is around me. So now here we see that there are two iBeacons that were found. And again, this isn't a dialogue I would show my user. This is just for the demo so that you know the kind of information that FileMaker is gathering. And once that happens, it tells me the two pieces of art that are nearby and as a user would be able to click into these and get some detail about it. Now I think there's a lot we could do with users and I'll actually be doing a separate video to talk about how much information a user can get from these iBeacons and the benefit that comes from that. But I really want to focus on the benefit for the business, in this case the museum. Let me open up the database in FileMaker and in the previous video I talked about the six different things that you get from an iBeacon. You get the ID, the major, the minor, the proximity, how far is it, the accuracy, and then the RSSI, or the strength of the signal. When the user hits the refresh button, what the user gets is a list of pieces of art related to the iBeacons near them. The part that may not be obvious is that when that script runs, not only does it evaluate for the iBeacons and show a list of the art, it also creates a history of the iBeacons that were found. This isn't hosted on a server, I would probably run the server side just to be a little bit faster here, but the example remains the same. So if I go to the create iBeacons records script, there's a layout called beacon history, which is what the layout that I'm on back here, and basically it goes through and populates a field with all of that beacon info. So if you think back to that custom dialog that came up on my iPhone, it provided me with a comma delimited list of the six things for every iBeacon. And in the last example, I had two iBeacons. So if we were to scroll down to the very end of this list, let me make sure I'm unsorted here. If I scroll to the very bottom, we should see the last two things that I found when I hit that refresh button on my iPhone. So let me make this window a little bit bigger and let's talk about all this stuff that's on here. So again, the user doesn't know this data is being captured, but basically I now have a record that tells me that at a given time and a given date, these are the iBeacons that were in range. So I can extrapolate that these are the works of art that were nearby when the person refreshed their FileMaker app. I've got a separate table that is an art table, nothing fancy here. It's not meant to be user facing by any means. But basically I have every piece of art has a beacon ID, which we're attributing to a museum, and then a major, which basically defines this piece of art specifically. So this one's four, Starry Night is three, and so on. And all of these have the same beacon ID. What that means is in FileMaker, I can now relate these two values to a piece of art. That's the blue field there. And then the yellow is just highlighting the date and time when that ping happened. This is a lot of data here. It's a little bit hard to look at when you're just looking at a bunch of numbers, but what if we were to group up the data over a given period of time? Now I'm gonna look at the data from all dates. So I'm gonna look at all 1,014 records that I have here. But if I sort this data by title and by hour, this calculation is basically taking 5.22 p.m. and just making it the number five. 11.42 a.m. is just 11. What I'm trying to do is create a grouping so that I can get some smart data about these different records. So I'll sort my data. I'm going to go to a layout here called the Beacon History Chart. And what this layout gives me is it gives me some information about the hourly breakdown of the iBeacons. So because each iBeacon is presumably tied to one piece of art, I'm able to group those up and look at when those iBeacons were pinged over a given day. So we're assuming here that the museum's open from nine to five. And you notice that three musicians peaks right after lunch, right at one o'clock. Now we can't look at this data exclusively. We'd have to actually look at it and compare with what other works of art are nearby. For example, if the three musicians is close to some other piece of art that's really popular, then we would want to kind of compare it and we'd want to realize that maybe three musicians gets a lot of attention at this time because maybe this other piece of art is also very popular around that time. So it's not to say that this data stands alone. There are a lot of things to understand about the physical location of these items, but that's the beauty of the iBeacons, is by knowing when someone is in range to an iBeacon, we can analyze the data, we can understand the physical location of things, and we can make decisions based on that. So if we wanted another piece of art to potentially get more attention, maybe we move it closer to something else. 
these are times where things like the exit and the entrance matters, maybe the proximity to a cafeteria and restrooms. These are all different things that, again, depend on physical location and could really impact how a business decides to continue doing business. Do things get moved around? Are things in the right place? Do we attract attention by relating things by type of art or by popularity and so on? I think it's a cool way that a business could collect data. So even though all that the iBeacon provides is an ID, with FileMaker, we can do anything with that data. So now we can collect dates and times, we can relate it back to a specific piece of art, and we can make some educated guesses based on that information. I think this could be cool for something like a warehouse where you could see how often a warehouse iBeacon is being pinged and you could look at the times just like we did for the museum here and notice when people are in that part of the warehouse the most. I want to be clear one more time here and I think I mentioned it in my last video. In order for these records to get created or in order for FileMaker to be aware of iBeacons, a script would have to run. Something will have to happen in order for FileMaker to start looking for them. So it's not like you walk into a room and FileMaker just knows that you've walked into the room that has the Mona Lisa. You'd have to actually hit that refresh button or do something in FileMaker that would trigger that functionality. While that's a limitation in some ways, I think it makes this feature really important and I think it's going to have some really great uses and I look forward to hearing about all the different use cases that come out of this. All right, so that's a quick little video on the functionality of iBeacons and how a business can benefit from the data. I hope you find this useful. I'd love to hear how you've implemented this or how you plan on implementing this. Stay tuned, I'll have at least one more video on iBeacons and how it can really empower a user for something like a trade show or a, a road show. Don't forget to subscribe to Saliant TV and thank you for watching.